So we're going to Normandy and we're going to see the D-Day beaches and of course the American Cemetery, Omaha Beach, St. Mary Glees where the paratroopers went. Yeah. And we're going to eat some amazing food because hey, Normandy has its own special kind of cuisine. And we're going to check out some super cool little towns because there's some amazing things to see. And I just can't wait to see what all there is to see there. Yeah, me too. Alors, you ready to go? I'm ready for an adventure. Allez, on y va. Let's go. So obviously we're driving to Normandy, but there are multiple ways to get there. You could rent a car from Paris and drive to Normandy. It's about three hours. Or you can hire a private driver to drive you there, show you around and bring you back. You could also do a one day trip when you leave Paris at seven o'clock in the morning. They take you to Normandy on a motor coach and drive you back at night. That's the marathon style. Or you can take the train from Gare Saint-Lazare in Paris and go all the way to Bayeux, which is a delightful medieval town, and then hire a guided tour from there. But since we live in France, we're taking our car and we're going. Let's go. So one of our first stop in Normandy D-Day beaches is saint mer l'Église, And saint mer l'Église is famous because about 13,000 paratroopers were dropped off right here, most of them in the wrong spot. Uh, supposedly in complete darkness, except that there was a house fire in the area which lit up the sky so the German could see the paratroopers. Uh, and a lot of them got shot as they were coming down. You know, many of them didn't uh, die before they even set a foot in France because they got shot in the sky. That's, you know, if there's a definition of courage, that's it. So this is a, an essential pit stop when you're coming to um, Normandy D-Day is to come here and pay your respect to those 13,000 paratroopers uh, and the sacrifice that uh, they made to uh, liberate France. Now on the lighter note, um, Normandy is known for many things, Calvados, cider, but also caramel. And there is a small town right around uh, from here called Isigny. We're gonna go and see how they make caramel and I expect that we're gonna taste a few ones. So let's go. Now we're gonna go and see the, the factory where they make caramels of Isigny, right there. Let's go. Normandy is known for dairy and Isney is known specifically for butter. Um, I learned about that in, just in the grocery store, um, but it's a very special recipe. It's a, it's a national distinction for the butter of Isney. If you have the good fortune to come visit Normandy and you're not on one of those buses that like brings you in in the morning and takes you back at night and it's a marathon kind of a day, it's definitely worth stopping in Isney to have a look at this place. The Isney Carmel is uh, also famous. Carmel from the whole area is famous, but the Isney Carmel is um, especially delicious and it's worth a visit here because they have a, a, a shop where you can buy the ice cream, other candies and stuff, but you can go inside and see how it's made and, and experience the whole, the reason why it's just a cut above because this is exceptionally good caramel. And if you're looking to bring some things home, you can bring some caramels back to your friends if it makes it home, because you may just want to eat it yourself. I've done that before. So let's go to Point du Oc. Incredible, as you can see all the holes. I mean, the entire uh, cliff here, that was a plateau. And what you're seeing here with all the holes and all those things, these were the bombs dropped by the Americans to try to dislodge the uh, German positions and knock out their guns. And they were able to do some, uh, some serious damage, but uh, they weren't able to take them all out. So all of the stuff that you see here, and it looks like Swiss cheese, that used to be a flatland at a plateau and it's pretty incredible to see it in that shape very telling on how violent uh, whatever happened here happened pretty incredible from here you have a pretty solid picture of what these cliffs look like and what the rangers you know the, the american army rangers climbed up those cliffs 
and they were all young boys, uh, men, but still the age of my kid. And they had rope ladders that they just threw up and climbed one over the other um, just to get to the top, you know, to come through the water, to climb that 90, 100 foot cliff, to come up here and have German soldiers watching and waiting and ready to shoot at them. It's just dumbfounding. Just, it's insane that we were able to take that position. Just crazy. I don't know about you, but it's, that's stirring up a lot of emotions for me. Absolutely. Yeah. It's hard to imagine uh, what these boys went through. Just... For my freedom. Yeah, for mine. Well, for all of us. Yours first. But... Yeah. So your mom could grow up. Yeah, so I didn't have to learn German in school. That's pretty much it. I have a little surprise for you. I told you we were gonna go camping. Okay. I got us a, a hotel, but it's a surprise. Okay, good, because I'm not much of a camper. <laughs> I was gonna pretend to be a happy camper. Yeah, so you ready to go? Are you ready to go? Let's go. What's in this little pouch? So those are butternut squash seeds. How cool is that? things are not common in France. They actually have a bathtub. And not just a bathtub. Those yeah. are jacuzzi jets. <laughs> I know what I'm doing tonight. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. That's a French breakfast. morning we're on our way to the American cemetery and um, might be another emotional day yeah but we'll be there soon right five minutes away one of the things that's so completely extraordinary here is you know, it's like, we know what happened. This was absolutely horrific. And yet here, this is a tranquil space, like life goes on, young people, old people. I'm, I'm watching old women who probably lost very dear people to them. I'm probably, what's their last trip here? I'm just breaking down in tears all over the place. I'm present to the struggle in the Ukraine and that one day there'll be a peaceful and serene place like this to honor what happened there inside of what was so horrific and, and what's so horrific here today, fighting for peace. You know, and Antoine says fighting so that he didn't have to learn German in school because of course they were in France, but I feel so much of my freedom connected to this place right here. The absolute waste of human lives that it took to do that that we really didn't need to lose if we could just communicate and talk and respect each other. It's amazing. Really uh, humbling. These are going on a lot of headstones today. I brought four rolls of pennies and I have them helping me, which is even, it's a team. Thank you. Cameron. I'm Specialist Ferreira. I'm with the Rhode Island Army National Guard.
the thing that gets me every time here is you can see here all the the tombstone and it looks like they're plunging in uh, the ocean as far as the eye can see and it's a uh, it's a stark reminder of what happened here. Like you can see this line of uh, tombstone that is just going and curving into Omaha Beach. It's a pretty incredible sight. Let's go to Bayeux, which okay. is a small medieval town, which is delightful. Okay. And we're gonna go have lunch over there. We'll have something light after the yeah. significance of the morning. Exactly. You ready to go? I'm ready. Allez, on y va? Let's go. Let's go. We're gonna go have lunch at La Alcove, which is right over here. So I've heard that here in Bayou that there's an amazing tapestry that tells the history of this area, the Normandy area. I've heard great things about this one, so let's check it out. If you ever come to Bayou, you have to see this because it is a 70 meter long story of William the Conqueror's tour from being the Duke of Norman until he conquered the Anglo-Saxons to become a King of England. And so each little segment with very fine detail, I mean, you can just see the, the stitchery and everything. And it's a fascinating way to tell the story. It's beautiful, it's interesting, it's funny, it's definitely worth seeing. This town of Bayeux is an absolute gem. Like the little cobblestone streets, the little cafes and restaurants everywhere, the antiquity is absolutely stunning. This place was liberated June 7th, yeah. you know, after D-Day, the next day. The next day, The yeah. whole town was preserved, so it was not having to be rebuilt. Right. It was, you know, this is what it looked like. It wasn't destroyed in the Second World War. Check out the uh, beautiful stained glass right there on this uh, cathedral. I mean, this is seriously gorgeous. Like the detail and everything. Let's, all right, let's go see if we can get inside. <laughs> Look how quaint this is. This is way better than digging a ditch and pitching a tent. A bedroom right there, that's awesome. Bedroom? Another bedroom. So it was 23 years ago that Antoine and I came here right to this house. We perched in that little window right there all skinny and young <laughs> yeah. and romantic. 
and we spent some time here when we got married yeah. back in 1999. Yeah, and this is the actually uh, the house in the opening scene in the movie The Longest Day. So if you want to see what this house looks like, you can uh, watch this movie and you'll see this little house and it's cool to be back. It's very cool to be back. And the other thing that's cool is we're right here on the Normandy coast. The ocean is right here. And uh, we just, you know, we went wandering, picking mussels, you know, for moule frites and yeah. uh, like all of that happens right well, let's here. Go, let's go and check out the beach really quick. Let's, let's just take to, a quick walk. Let's go to the beach. We just saw a couple of deer come through here. So we're gonna try and be really quiet. Go grab a bite to eat. Oh yeah. Bon appétit. Merci. Merci. And here is uh, an incredible thing here on sunset on Omaha Beach. So this is Omaha Beach here, right? This is where uh, at least a lot of American boys uh, arrived. And then look at that vantage point. And those uh, young American soldiers uh, are about a hundred feet down, wide open. It doesn't look like a fair fight to me. Now you have little sheeps right there that are just grazing at sunset. And that's a wrap for today. We'll start again tomorrow morning. Good night. This is uh, the stunning memorial right here on Omaha Beach that is right in front of the places where they all landed, which now looks very calm. And you can see um, all the way over there, the cliffs where Point du Hoc is, and uh, this memorial right there, which is beautiful. So now we're headed to uh, the Batterie de Longue-sur-Mer, which are four big cannons that are left over from, uh, obviously, World War II. And they're enormous uh, cannons that were designed to uh, basically pound the coast and the boats over there. And they told us that uh, we need to go and see it. So that's what we're doing. Here we go. Here we go. So now let's go check out Alan Marsh. I want to see that. Yep, let's go. Cool. On y va. On y va. You see all those things over there? Mm -hmm. So that's one of the genius of, of D-Day beaches. One of the things that the Germans were counting on is that uh, they needed a port in order to unload equipment. Because you can unload thousands of men, but unless you have equipment, then uh, you're not going to win. They recreated a port and they put all those barges over there where the big ship would arrive all the way to those barges, would unload, and then they had ramps that were going from those barges all the way to the beach to unload trucks and tanks and everything. And this is basically what overwhelmed the, uh, the Germans because not only there were thousands of men that arrived but also within uh, within a few days uh, thousands of vehicles uh, they were installed yeah they, they were, were installed. installed and you see you have one of those barges right there you see that how big it is and I think 
Yeah, this we one. We have this one, but we also have that one. And I want to come on. Let's go walk over there. Yeah, let's go. So, what do you say that uh, on our way out we uh, go to Co and uh, have lunch over there? Sounds like a plan. Sounds like a great idea. Allez, on y va. Let's go. Go have lunch right here. Well, that's awesome. This is my childhood right there. They brought us a little uh, glass of cider, local cider. It was a very nice touch. And if you don't want to drink alcohol, you can have a little shooter like that. That's really cool. Cheers. There are a lot of memorials here in the Normandy area for World War II, but if you only have time to see one, this is it. We're here in Caen, which was completely leveled uh, in the war, and this memorial is pretty profound, pretty full, and it's not only a memorial to the war, but it is a memorial to peace and world peace, like from the Cold War, even 9-11, uh, but this is dedicated to not having war again. So let's go inside. So that wraps up this side of Normandy, and I'm so glad we did that. Yeah. But we're gonna go see the north side of Normandy, which has amazing little seaside villages like Etretat, which is that Google image of the arch that you wonder where the heck that is. Uh, on floor, a beautiful seaside village. Deauville beaches, we're gonna ride in a sidecar. We're gonna try some of the local stuff up there, like Calvados, and hopefully we'll get in to see the distillery where they make it and I just can't wait to see it. Me too. So, until next time, au revoir. Au revoir.